Hello, hello. Welcome to the Crystal Corner. My name is Tess Raff. Today we're going to be talking about the Crystal Ruby. Now, Ruby is a gem variety of the mineral known as Corundum, and Corundum is an allochromatic mineral. Now, an allochromatic mineral is a stone that can come in a variety of colors. It's naturally a colorless stone, and all of the different colors that we see in nature are caused by trace elements within that stone. So, Ruby gets its distinct color from the trace element known as chromium, and chromium has a cool reaction with UV light where it will actually glow. And Burmese rubies have the kind of strongest UV reaction, which is why you may have heard of Burmese rubies before, is because that strong UV reaction causes them to look as though that they are glowing, uh, sometimes even in regular daylight. So that's one of the reasons that they are so prized and highly valued. Now, as far as working with rubies metaphysically, the Smithsonian Gem Guide does talk about rubies being associated with dragons at one point in time. Uh, there was a tradition where they thought that ruby was actually petrified blood from dragons. So like crystal blood. So you can use it if you want to kind of meditate and connect with the energy of dragons, because uh, there's already a strong connection with that kind of mythical creature. I often associate dragons with the guardians of great riches and kind of great protectors and some of the other kind of more well-known associations with rubies which are like royalty and wealth and abundance uh, I think go hand in hand with that association with dragons. The long tradition of being associated with not only dragons but also royalty makes this a great stone to work with anytime that we want to bring more abundance into our lives or have that feeling of wealth and enjoyment of the finer things. Now, if you are just getting into working with stones and you maybe don't have ruby, there is a really cool thing that you can do with quartz. Because quartz is a universal stone, if all you have access to is quartz, you can actually program a piece of quartz to match the vibration of ruby and to give you the experience of connecting with the ruby crystal. So that's one thing that you can do if you don't have a piece of ruby on hand, but you may already have a piece of quartz and you can meditate with the energy of ruby that way. Now, when we are working with ruby uh, metaphysically, we are usually attracting something into our life or we are uh, protecting a idea that we are manifesting into our reality. So it's doing a lot of work for us and we don't necessarily have to cleanse it regularly, but we do want to make sure that we are charging it and making sure that we are refreshing our intentions. So whenever we're working with this stone, it's a great stone to kind of let charge in the sunlight. It's a very active energy. So that active solar energy is going to be a good source for it to kind of pull from and recharge itself. But if you feel drawn to recharge it another way, obviously do that. Uh, do whatever you feel intuitively guided to. But uh, you only really need to cleanse it whenever you are changing your intention, whatever it is that you're focusing your work on. So just make sure that you are keeping it charged and it will stay nice, happy, and productive stone for you and your little crystal ally arsenal. And uh, with that being said, it's also the birthstone for this month. So if this is your birthstone, you may notice that you have some qualities associated with that stone, or you may notice that that stone works particularly well for you. Uh, birthstones are kind of an interesting subject on their own. We can discuss that another time. But that's all I have for you today. My name is Tesseraf. Uh, please make sure that you are subscribed to Touch of Magic. And you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Tesseraf or find me on Tesseraf.com. And I look forward to talking to you guys again soon. Bye.